Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, a few months ago, I did a rather popular episode for Friday Science on the solar analemma, like this one. However, today I wanted to go ahead and revisit the solar analemma. We'll talk a little bit about how it's formed and discuss primarily something called the equation of time. Now, the equation of time is a very interesting proof of not only orbit, but axial tilt. So let's cue up the music and we'll go ahead and get started. Now, one of the things that I really enjoy about having this channel is it gives me a chance to learn about things that I didn't know about. Astronomy was never anything that I was really interested in or learned much about. And preparing these videos has helped me learn a lot about astronomy that I wouldn't have otherwise done. And hopefully I've been able to put some of that off to you. Now, before we get started, let's go ahead and go over some very basic concepts in astronomy. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is this, the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. As you see, it goes in this counterclockwise direction if we're looking at the solar system from above. Okay, so let's have a look at the rotation of the Earth. This spot in South America is directly underneath the Sun. So it is 12 noon at that little tip in South America. If the Earth rotated once every 24 hours, the Earth would come around, and again, that spot would be directly under the Sun, and it would be 12 noon again. However, the Earth orbits around the Sun. It takes 365 days to make one full orbit, and there are 360 degrees in a full circle. So between one day and the next, the Earth has moved along one degree, actually a little less, in its orbit. If the Earth rotated once every 24 hours, this spot on South America would be directly underneath this spot off to the side of the Sun. It actually has to rotate a little bit more to go back and point again at the Sun. So the Earth rotates once every 23 hours and 56 minutes. Why is that? As you know, the Earth rotates 15 degrees per hour, and it needs to rotate one extra degree to point back at the Sun. That takes four minutes. So the Earth's rotational speed is 23 hours, 56 minutes, and four seconds. The balance of the 24 hours is the time it takes to rotate a little bit more to bring it in alignment with the Sun. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this episode, and that is the solar analemma. Now, many of you have seen this object on a globe. This is called a solar analemma. And what it does is it tracks the position of the sun at 12 noon every day. And that's 12 noon local time. Now, this is a very important concept, the difference between local solar time and mean solar time. Now, local solar time is also called sundial time. And local solar noon will be when the sun is at its highest point in the sky from your location. Mean solar time is also called watch time. That's when your clock says 12 noon. Now that's an average of mean solar noon throughout the entire year. If the Earth was in a perfectly circular orbit and had no axial tilt, and you were at that spot on the equator, at 12 noon every day, the sun would be directly over your head. But the Earth does have an axial tilt, and as a result, the sun travels north to the Tropic of Cancer in June, comes back down to the equator, and then travels south to the Tropic of Capricorn in December. The two times that it is over the equator are called the equinox, and they occur in March and September. We have the June solstice, when the sun is furthest north, and we have the December solstice, when the sun is the farthest south. Now, down by the December equinox, you'll notice that as time goes on into January and February, the sun time is slow, which means that it is watch noon before it is sundial noon. And that can be up to 14 and a half minutes. Now after the September equinox, as it comes around this way towards the December solstice, you'll notice that the sun time is fast. That means that 12 noon on your sundial will come before 12 noon on your watch. Now, why is this? 
Let's have a look. This is kind of a busy graph, so I want to go ahead and go over them one at a time. Now over here where it says effect of obliquity, that has to do with the axial tilt of the Earth. Now if you look at this graph, you'll see here at the December equinox, this forms a sine wave. At first, solar time comes considerably faster than mean solar or clock time. Now if you look down here by the December equinox, you'll see that sundial time comes before clock time. And then it comes up and it hits a point where you have sundial time equaling clock time. And then sundial time falls behind clock time until you get to the June equinox here in the middle. And then the process starts over again. Now this comes from the sun going from its most southern point over the Tropic of Capricorn up past the equator to the June solstice at the Tropic of Cancer. And then it returns back. So as it goes up, it forms this complete sine wave. And then as it comes back down, it forms another complete sine wave. Now if you look at the effect of the obliquity with that double sine wave, you find this figure eight. But that's not what we see in our skies. We see something that looks like this. And notice that that's asymmetrical. The small loop is at the northern part of the analemma, and the big loop is at the bottom part. Now, why is this? Because there's another factor involved. The Earth's orbit around the sun is not completely circular. It's elliptical. We have a perigee where we're closest to the sun and an apogee where we're farthest from the sun. Perigee occurs in December. Apogee occurs in June. According to Kepler's laws of planetary motion, when you have an elliptical orbit like that, as you come to perigee, closest to the sun, our orbital speed increases. That's in December. And then as we get out to the farthest point from the sun, our orbital speed is a little slower, and that's in June. This forms a sine wave where the Earth speeds up and then it slows down again. Now this occurs over a 12 month period as opposed to the one from the axial tilt which occurs over a six month period. So we get the figure eight from the axial tilt and when you combine the orbital speed based on where we are in the elliptical orbit that is what deforms this figure eight. So this tracing right here is called the equation of time and the way that we used to use this is that you would have a sundial in your house and you would have a copy of this graph. So say you went out and read your sundial on this day right here, which is sometime in January. Now, if your sundial told you that it was 12 noon, you would go to this chart and see that you had to subtract 12 minutes from that to get the correct clock time. So it would actually be 11.48 a.m. If you did the same over here, you saw that you would have to add six minutes. So if the sundial said that it was 12 noon, it would actually be 12.06 p.m. So with a solar analemma, we can set our clocks. It will tell us how many minutes we need to add or subtract from our sundial time to give us the correct clock time. Now there's some other things that we can do with it. This is a solar analemma taken from Greenwich Observatory in Greenwich, England. You'll notice the June solstice has a green dot here. The December solstice has a green dot down here at the southern end of the analemma. And then the equinox is also noted with these green dots. This is the September equinox. This is the March equinox. Now, when we looked at our original analemma, we noticed that it was centered over the equator. And at the equinox, the sun was directly over the equator. And at the solstice, it would either be in the north in June or in the south in December. I'm at about the 45th north latitude. So on the equinox, and I did this last March, what I can do is I can measure the angle to the sun and it's about 45 degrees. I subtract 45 degrees from 90 to get my latitude which is 45 degrees. That's how you determine latitude, and that's the basic operation of a sextant. Now let's go back to this solar analemma from the Greenwich Observatory in England. 
both the September equinox and the March equinox are at about 39 degrees. Subtract 39 degrees from 90 and you find that the latitude of the Greenwich Observatory is approximately 51 degrees north. What else can we tell from the solar analemma? If you look at the line where the equinox is located and go up, you will find that you will go up 23 and a half degrees. And that will get you to the June solstice. Likewise, if you go back to your line where your equinox is and go down to the December solstice, you will find that that is 23 and a half degrees as well. The axial tilt of the Earth is 23 and a half degrees. Now let's have a look and see what the solar analemma looks like at different parts of the world. Where is this picture taken? Well, I see some columns there. It's probably Greece or Rome. That's in the Northern Hemisphere. But more importantly, if we look at the solar analemma, we notice that the top loop is smaller than the bottom loop. As you recall, the big loop is on the southern end and the small loop is on the northern end. So we're in the northern hemisphere. What's more, we're probably getting into the afternoon uh, and approaching night, and this is probably looking west. Let's have a look at another one. Now this one's interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, this is obviously not a 12 noon solar analemma. The small loop is in the bottom near the sunset, so we're again looking west. The big loop is up on top. So where would this be from? If you answered the southern hemisphere, you'd be right because this was taken in Sydney, Australia. Now let's look at a more difficult one. Obviously there's a lot of snow here, the top of that solar analemma is in December. So since the big loop is going upward, we're in the southern hemisphere. Where's the top of the solar analemma? Where's the small loop? It's not visible. It's below the horizon. This is what the solar analemma from the South Pole looks like. Now think about it for a second. What would the solar analemma from the North Pole look like? If you said that we would just see the small loop on top, and we wouldn't see the bottom loop, you're right. Now let's throw you for a real loop. Here is a solar analemma on its side with only one loop. It's a bean shape analemma. Axial tilt is not playing a big role in this analemma, but the eccentricity of the orbit, the elliptical orbit, is. This is the solar analemma from Mars, which has a very elliptical orbit that basically obliterates the small loop at the top. Well guys, thank you very much for stopping by and I hope that you found this short video enlightening and helpful in your understanding of how the solar analemma works. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Make sure you hit that little like and subscribe button down there. I'd really love to have you on Team Bob and we'll see you again soon.